BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Have you ever received a call from someone claiming to be from the IRS, indicating you owe money, sometimes even being threatened to be put in jail if you will not pay? These scams come in many forms. If someone calls asking for money or personal information, hang up. If you think the caller might be telling the truth, call back to a number you know is genuine. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmer's Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. Another me. And when you have multiple farmer's policies, you could save up to 45% on your auto insurance with the auto multi-policy discount. What's going on with our voice? I thought I'd add some drama. Well, isn't that something? Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available with select Farmers branded policies. Subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges, Farmers New World Life Insurance Company, or affiliate. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a cool new Uber Eats commercial. Where Star Wars and Star Trek collide. Uh-oh. Mark Hamill, well known for playing Luke Skywalker, and Patrick Stewart, well known for playing Jean Luc Picard. On Star Trek, they fight over the pronunciation of the word tomato. Tonight, I'll be eating a veggie cheeseburger on ciabatta. No tomatoes. Tonight, I'll be eating four cheese tortellini here with extra tomatoes. Stewart. So it's come to this. Thank you. Bravo. Careful, Hamel. Daddy's not here to save you. Oh, I am my daddy. <laughs> Whoa. Wait, what? Mark this Hamill, after dark. Here to save you. What the hell are you talking about? I'm not sure I got that right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. Is I, this the first time they've they've, they've like combined the two for anything? I think so. I don't think I've ever seen Hamill and 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 uh, Patrick Stewart do anything together. To be honest with you, but I could be wrong. I don't remember who wins in the fight. Oh, it's got to be Mark Hamill, right? Well, he does Luke. have the force. Yeah, I mean, you know, Patrick Stewart just if, unless Patrick's got a couple of phasers and like you know twenty third century technology on him, then maybe he does it. Yeah. I love that uh, Mark has a baseball bat and Patrick Stewart has like a cricket bat. Oh, that's really cool. That's very very yeah, cool. Yeah, first I thought he had a lightsaber. I'm like, oh well, man. It's going to go gonna down. Yeah. yeah, it's going to slice them. They're in this. They're in like this warehouse. Looks like they're about to you know make a drug deal or something. Yeah, it's a good commercial. I like it. And, uh, of course, you know, you got the English with tomato. <laughs> and you got the old American, Mark Hamill, tomato. Tomato, that's right. Tomato. Yeah. No, tomato would yeah. be a whole different character. That's a good point. Uh, 2018, uh, there was an article called The Enduring Enigma of Costco's Dollar Fifty Hot Dog and Soda Combo from uh, Mental Floss. And it's now going viral again on Twitter uh, because Costco apparently uh, dead set. Uh, about that price, and it's all because of co-founder and former CEO Jim Sinegal, who uh, wanted to keep that price of the Costco hot dog the same by any means necessary. And apparently when uh, Costco president uh, Greg Jelinek once complained to Jim that their warehouse business was losing money on this famously cheap buck fifty hot dog and soda package, Jim Listen nodded and then said, quote, if you raise the price of the effing hot dog, I will kill you. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> Makes me want to have a Costco hot dog now. All right. I've never had a Costco hot dog. So really? Good. 
Yeah, I don't usually eat anything at Costco other than the samples. See, okay, fair point. However, Vicky turned me on to the yes. the whole cafeteria one time mm-hmm. because she was like, Danny, you've never tried the pizza. You need to try the pizza. I had the pizza. And I never tried it. And she did. And then at that point, I, it just opened up a whole new world to me. I was like, we should come here every day for lunch. And it's different than just ordering their pizza to go. You have to have it straight from them, a slice where it's hot, the cheese is just gooing off yes. of it. Yes. Costco pizza, I think I read some where that they're the biggest pizza chain in like the United States or something because of how much pizza they sell. I wouldn't be surprised by that, man. Like it's funny because like back when we were playing beer league, like sometimes at night, uh, one of the guys would just grab a pizza at Costco and bring it to the game. Now, granted, it wasn't hot; it was like sitting in a you know cold locker room, but it was still delicious. After you finish playing hockey, or like anything's gonna, I'd eat the cardboard of the pizza box (laughs) and be like, "This is all. This is awesome. I'm so hungry." Yeah. Yeah, I don't eat anything. They got those acai bowls, too, over at uh, Costco that look pretty good. The ice cream or yogurt, whatever that is, is so good. Uh, oh, they, chicken bakes, man, is where it's at. They sell 100 million hot dogs annually. And it's fascinating. You know, I love where you've got the, the different mindsets because, yeah, I, I could see where the CEOs look. Just taking a look at those figures going, dude, come on. I mean, we sell 100 million hot dogs. If we raise the price, how much money we're going to make? And then the other dude probably thinking, do you realize this is what brings them into the store? Like, they will buy other stuff because mm-hmm. they're so happy about getting the hot dogs, and we will see sales in other departments. There's two different mindsets, yeah, no one's and going I love to, that. Yeah, no one's going to Costco just to get a hot dog. Yeah. Like, you're going to go into Costco, and you're, it's like going to Target. You don't go into Target just getting the one thing you planned on getting. You leave with a bunch of other stuff. Like, I went just to get the thing of chicken. I left with two Kraken shirts. Yeah. Like, it just happens. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. And then the thing of those... Uh, those those freaking pecans. Like, this is just called crack cocaine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I oh, just, the candy pecans. Oh, so I, praline ones. I went in for some milk and I ended up walking out. They now ser- have jello shots. Like a packet of jello shots. You just put them in the fridge and you can just have pre made jello shots with yeah, booze in them. They got booze in them. Oh, yeah. They're um, so good. Of course, Vicky's going to get those. I gave, they're like 12.5 ABV or something. I didn't even know they had these things. They're, they're new. How great is that? I mean, that's the thing that you have to get ready for your party, but now you don't have to. So they're doing it for you. And they're brilliant because you can actually just put ice in the bag. It says you can either put them in the fridge or put the ice in the bag for party mode. Oh. So they'll get cold and stuff and you just keep the ice in the what? bag. What? Yeah. These guys know what they're doing at Costco. Now, here's my and question. It, and it's a big hot dog. I mean, it's like a foot long. It's not, oh, not talking yeah. like a little hot dog. It's like a long hot dog. This is why Jim Senegal is like, come on. we got to raise the price. And they have the onion bar, so you can put as many onions and relish and mustard as you want on oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's, well, with COVID right now, they're giving you the little containers. Ah, oh, well. But it's kind of like nice. menchies. Yeah, I grabbed the, the containers. Makes okay, sense. that's fine with me. I'll take what they give me. But here's my big question. What? Can this you is a, the whole thing in your mouth? Yes. Well, I'm well, glad. That is a pretty big question. That is a big question. No, I mean, and, and this, I, I, I just like to see strategy from you guys. Do you go to the food cafeteria before or after you shop? What's your strategy? I don't know if you can. You go before? You can, but yeah, like, it's outside. A lot of times it's outside. No, our food. I'm, I'm basing on the Puyallup one. Like you go in your entrance. The, the food court's on the way out of the yeah, store. Yeah, like, same there's with like the one a barrier. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's a barrier, like, as you walk in, you can't go in through the exit. You gotta go in through the entrance to show your card. But you can go in through the but exit. They, because sometimes that's where, like, the card services are. And so we walked true. in and been like, yeah. about that. Yeah. Damn, Damn it. it. Still, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. However you want to go in, you just walk where you're going to go. I'm saying, yep. would you like to eat before or after you shop? What's your strategy? I, you guys are always at the end then. Well, I based on, like, other places, like like a Whole Foods, I like to eat after we got everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a treat afterwards. I want to get out as soon as I'm done eating. I was that guy, too, <laughs> until I started buying, like, frozen products or, or refrigerated. Oh. And it's like, okay, now I have to eat before. But I, I love. I, I think it's a treat, and that's what. It's really bad that I do that because you're not supposed to shop when you're hungry. And Costco's smart. I mean, maybe that's why they put it so you can't get to it until the end. Would you sit down and eat first, or do you get your hot dog or your pizza and walk with it while you shop? Oh, see, I I, th- I used to because I like 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 the appetizers of the free samples, and then the dinner is after. So yeah. <laughs> okay. that's your way out of wearing a mask, though. These days, like you'd be eating because if you're eating, you can't have a mask on. Ooh. <laughs> Saw a kid at Target. He was doing that. He was walking around eating Doritos. And his mask is out. At first, I'm like, why is this kid's mask on? I noticed he's eating Doritos. I'm like, okay, that's, that's one way around the rule there. Well, like, oh, I'm going to fine you $100,000 like the Seahawks. Yeah. Right <laughs> he is totally missing out on a golden opportunity. You put your snacks in your mask, and you eat it kind of like a horse does with its little bag. Oh, that's a great idea. Wow. And then nobody I don't know if he's necessarily chair. missing out on an opportunity. It, it sounds like a great idea to me. I'm I don't know what with, you're talking about. I'm kind of with Vicky on this. I would love to have, maybe just, and then somehow like a little suction system so I can just suck up more chips into my mask. 
mask. And then what you don't get the Dorito fingers while you're shopping. Yeah, I love this plan. I mean, this is what science is. Necess- this is what we need science for. Yeah, they can do it in this banks. stuff out. They have that little thing that delivers, you know, your. <sighs> yeah, I want yeah. one of those for my bag of Doritos. <laughs> you want it in your mouth? So instead of a colostomy <laughs> bag, I'll just have Whoa. a Doritos bag hanging that'll be feeding the tube, not going me, but going my mouth. So right. I want one of those. You guys are all insane. Yeah, yeah hey. this is a little nuts. Look, right now. what is wrong? Why can't I have a why well, can't can I have a it. chip colostomy bag? What's wrong with that? I did not realize that for the buck fifty, not only do you get the all beef hot dog quarter pound plus, uh, you also get a twenty ounce soda with. Oh refill. yeah, it's the whole thing. That's why they're like the, the hot dog and soda combo for a buck fifty. Jim Senegal, the CEO, is like, come on, man. I love how somebody like broke it down. Four year private college back in eighty four. Fifty five hundred bucks. Four year private college now one hundred forty seven thousand dollars. Medium home cost. 1984, 79,000. Medium home cost in 2020, 320,000. Costco hot dog and a soda combo, 1984, it's a buck 50. Co- Costco hot dog and soda combo now, dollar 50. I think it's Nothing brilliant. Has changed. I think it's brilliant. I, 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 I don't know the psychology of it all. And, you know, if somebody would break it down and go, how much money would they lose? How much money would they make? I mean, obviously, you can see what they would make if they raised the price, obviously, since they sell 100 million of these. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like, look, even if like, we lost a couple bucks totally, like, you know, I mean, I, I can't imagine they're at least breaking even. Well, but, he, he says they're losing money. But even if they're losing money, he's probably thinking, oh, so much money from all the other stuff. This is kind of like our, you know, this is like a little bit of like a, a thing that we want to keep our, you know, our, our history with. It brings the boys to the yard. I mean, it really, I, you know, when you have so many stores out there that are doing what they're doing, or for this matter, you know, for that matter, you've got online shopping. This is a brilliant idea. It makes me want to go to Costco right now. So this is Everett Costco Food Court open to anyone. No card needed. Yeah, the Everett one, the food court is still outside. Oh, you know why? Because Everett knows what's up. So he said, sure. when I went to my first divorce, uh, laughing at that part, but I liked that. I ate dinner at Costco every night because it was so cheap. Yeah. Another person says, I shop at Costco with four kids, all boys. Eating at Costco after shopping is an amazing bribery tool for my kids in the store. They're always perfect angels. And it really is a great value. How, how can you get a better value than for a buck fifty? And you know what? If one kid's got a big appetite, okay, here's $3. Three dollars to feed your kid two hot dogs and two sodas, for that matter. It's cool that he has like that tradition right there. He's like, this is just part of the tradition of Costco, and it's never going to change. I love that. I really, really love that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's hard to hang on when you all of a sudden become a public company and have boards of directors and all these other people, you know, that don't get it, you know, because they just come from a whole different thing. I, I love, love that, that he's threatening murdering somebody to keep that price. That's that old school, right there. There's a guy that if you might- change it. I'm going to kill you. Yeah, Mr. Senegal. Um, we're going to have to run some training videos for you to watch in this new day and age. Imagine being the other guy. Here you are sitting in an office like, I hey man, I hate to, like, we need to up the price of the hot dogs. And he sits and he listens, he looks at you and nods, you're like, okay, I think I got through the gym. And then he just stares and he goes, if you change the price, I'm going to kill you. That's like having meatloaf as your boss. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just you propose an idea and you think, well, he should like this, it's going to make the company more money. You do not want to f- with me! Okay, we maybe we shouldn't change the hot dog prices. Look in my eyes, I am the last but, person in the but we're world gonna, you ever. But we'll make money. I mean, we're what losing. Mr. I, all right, we won't change it. Do you understand me? I, yeah, I get it. I get it. We're going to continue to lose money on the hot dogs. All right, I'm sorry, sir. Please don't kill me. Someone says they also lose money on the rotisserie chickens, too. It's just a way to get people into the store and buy yeah. other stuff as well. They're $5 rotisserie chickens. Well, $5? Yeah. yeah I didn't know, know about this. What is How wrong did you with not you? know about this? It's like a classic. I don't eat at Costco. I need to step it up. Well, Let's go, Steve. Steve. It's going to be hard for you is to eat a rotisserie hot? chicken at Costco, but you can take them home. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's a hot rotisserie chicken. Yeah, I love that. You should take no. it home. No. I'd eat it in the car. Same, actually. Well, and get a fork, I guess. It's very hard. I don't need a fork. I got fingers. It, seriously, though, it is very hard to buy a rotisserie chicken, take it with you in the car, and not get a bite of it because it smells so right. good. I want to see Steve while everyone's sitting down with their Costco pizza and their Costco hot dogs. I want to see Steve just devour that rotisserie chicken. I've done that before. I've gone to like a, like a, a QFC right before like a Without a Cause wrestling show I'm on. And so a couple of us just sat in the, in the locker room and I just pr- pulled out one of those rotisserie chickens and we all picked at it. And that was like our way of just getting a little nourishment That's before we you wrestled. Guys, you guys are savages. It, it did feel rather savage for you. Yeah. Like as you're just like grabbing a piece of it, just having a conversation. Before the battle, <laughs> destroy the bird. Rotisserie chickens are legit. They are. Five dollars. Yeah, dude, I mean, you're, you're missing out. You better get to be with Puyallup Costco right away. Meat overload. Hot dog and chicken. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Meat overload. Do it, buddy. So I said I missed the Polish dog option at Costco. 
I got to get on this Costco like, <laughs> eating thing. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with you, man. Yeah. You got to bring tater tots. You know what the there. problem is? Every time yeah. I go to Costco to do my stuff, I almost think about, like, oh, maybe I should get a slicer. Or maybe get one of those ice creams. And then in line is so long for the food. I'm like, ah, I don't want to deal with that. So out of pure laziness, I'm saving Dude, dollars. they have kiosks yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. You can buy it yourself. You just go off to the side and you just wait for them to call out for your food. <laughs> yep. You have no excuse, Steve. None. Zero. Today's planned. Yeah. <laughs> Get that hot dog. Go so to says, Costco. I've gained six pounds listening to you fatties <laughs> ramble on and on about food. Thanks. Yes. No problem, buddy. That's what we're here for. We got this guy who has been playing... The same board game for nearly 40 years. Oh, this is a guy's my hero. How's this happened? Well, I'll tell you. It's 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Are you saving for your child's college education? If so, consider a 529 plan. To find your options, visit savingforcollege.com. You will find a comprehensive list of other states' plans along with details, rankings, tools, and calculators. That's savingforcollege.com. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit kisw.com slash becu. Farmer's Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad, smooth saxophone riffs. When you have a farmer's home policy with guaranteed replacement cost, if your home gets destroyed, we'll pay to rebuild it regardless of your limits. Dig it. It's a whole lot of something. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Optional coverage not available in every state. Only available with select farmers minded policies subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. A lifelong Dungeons & Dragons fan in Canada is celebrating... 38 years of running the same ongoing game. This guy's name is Robert Wardaw. And, uh, Wardaw. Uh, Wardaw, actually. Robert, Wardaw. Robert Wardaw. And he uh, started this round of uh, this fantasy role-playing game that we all know as D&D back in 1982. Right, right out of Stranger Things, man. Uh, is and, it Warhammer in a... No. In, oh, I was just well, saying, he well, changed his name to Warhammer. Yeah. Warhammer, I mean, I don't know if there's actually a thing called a Warhammer in there, but Warhammer is a whole different kind of gaming system oh, as well. Up. Sorry, buddy. All right, I was yeah. trying to relate. Yeah, there may, I mean, there may be some items somewhere that could be found in the game. I haven't played in a long time. There, there are Warhammers in D&D. They're just really big hammers that you use to smash things. Okay. Well, that should be his nickname. All right. Robert the Warhammer Wardow. It might be, for all we know. So he started this in 1982 with just four players. Now... He runs up to two to four sessions a week over Zoom. He has nearly 60, 60, 60 active players. Wait a second. So there's no end in sight to the game? Like, you know what I mean? Like, the, there's no end to the game? I don't understand. I, I never played Dungeons yeah, and Dragons, Rev, and I'm you, not trying to make fun and, of it. And Rev, you play more than I do, so yeah. how is it possible that he can be playing the same campaign for 38 years? Because uh, campaigns are essentially like stories, like maybe like chapters or seasons. So if you have that many people, you probably have a certain amount of people doing certain things on certain days, like maybe a group of like five or six, but they just keep on going. You'll defeat the big bad, but then there's another big bad coming along. So it's uh, ever-evolving. It's kind of like a, a uh, like an MMO is the same thing like with video games. Like you're playing a role-playing game and you're running around with just a bunch of different people. That's really what it is. So there's no like option like the I'm, I'm, let's, let's end this effing game button or something like that. You know what no, I mean? Like, usually. Like, like a joker. <laughs> you put that on the game or something like it's over. I'm done with this stupid It feels game. like a TV show that just has seasons. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's more of a storytelling game. Wow. Just you get to roll dice and have some fun with it in that way. And yeah, usually the way the, the games end is when people stop showing up. Yeah. And he goes to you on your phone. But now he's got 60 people a part of it. And I will tell you that there, I, there's something different about a person that plays Dungeons & Dragons and a person who runs the campaign, the Dungeon mm -hmm. Master. I think they're mm -hmm. different types of people. Absolutely. Yeah, because a lot of the folks that run these games, the Dungeon Masters, love storytelling and love creating adventures for people to go through. And it just be like they're the, they're the big puppet master. And there's people who just love doing that. I never did. I was like, I don't want to be the Dungeon <laughs> Master. Let's somebody else do it. There, there he is. There's the guy, man. He kind of dresses like you. Oh, and he, he, look, at, he's got a sweet setup. Like he's got all sorts of like, uh, if you think of like mini railroad 
roads. I mean, he's great. He's got trees and buildings he's constructed, so he really makes the adventure amazing rather than just say, here's a piece of paper. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Yeah. That's one of the things. It's less theater of the mind, and he's actually building stuff. And you can find all of these things. Like, I have a, a lot of little miniatures that, the, the pre-painted ones, because I hate painting those stupid things, but it's really fun just to have those and have a little representation of yourself in the game running around doing I've stuff. Dude, he's got 20,000 miniatures. Yeah, it does. And he's got scenes like snow scenes and forest scenes that he's created. Oh, yeah, he's a big planner. Oh, yeah, on and always oh, painted the minis. That's a me. I mean, that's a painted piece right there, Steve. Uh, wow, good for him. I wonder how many of the original four, if he's the only one. And has anybody in this actual like group passed away? Not trying to be morbid, but like you've been doing this since 1982. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of people that are coming. In. Yeah. It's, it's this is like a documentary that I would actually want to watch. Not only even like I said, like Dungeons and Dragons is not my world, but the fact that this guy's been playing a game since 1982 is interesting. I think. And I'm seeing over in your article, he's a history professor, yeah. which of course makes it so much more interesting if he's leading the story, because he can just draw on so much of what he knows from history and, and oh, do a yeah. lot of make em ups. Absolutely. Do you think romance has happened because of this? Like people have become. Got into relationships. I'll and, tell you this. I you mean, think people's friendships ended because of this. Oh, I, I bet. Yes. Yeah. I, you know, and I don't know. You know, when I started, um, as far as I know, I, I was just playing Dungeons and Dragons with male, cisgendered, heterosexual dudes. But now in the 40, you know, almost 38 years he's doing it, who knows who's involved? And therefore, the more people that you bring in, the more chance for romance, Steve. So it's very possible. His daughter's been involved since she was eight years old. Yeah. And she's now a teen. 38 years, he thinks, is a record. Yeah, I, I don't know if Guinness is, does stuff like this, but it sounds like a world record to me. It'd be great if he called Guinness and like, yeah, we're positive. There's no one else doing this. You got the, you got the record, dude. <laughs> now <laughs> he's not home, even going to look. He's homebrewed some stuff, too, Rev. He says he's they started with the normal D&D rules, uh, but he's developed his own set of rules as the campaign's involved, which a lot of people well, like yeah. to do. After almost 40 years, that would make sense. There's yeah. just times where you're just like, well, this thing isn't going to work for what we're doing. I'm just going to change it. He's the DM. He gets to. Yeah. Now, obviously, nowadays, you're doing everything with Zoom, but he said before that, I mean, there were people that were flying in, driving in from all parts of Canada to take part. There's uh, somebody that would play via video chat on in the United Kingdom. It makes sense because he's got such an epic setup, and it sounds like he's a great dungeon master telling a great story. Yeah. If you get the right, like, that kind of DM, I would, I could see people flying in. Because, Rev, I don't know if you've seen the pictures. I'd fly in oh, yeah. to be able to just yeah. see the miniatures and, and the landscapes he set up. That would be something, like, along the lines of, like, hey, wife, we're going to go on a really fun vacation, but for one of those days, figure out something else to do. I'm going to go play D&D. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And he says, one of the things that sets my game apart from all other games is that the only thing that's going to limit it, I suppose, is my lifespan. <laughs> so he's like, I'm going to keep going until I'm dead. That's and awesome. this is Mr. D&D guy, 38 years so of playing the same game. So when he gets older, do you think like he's going to think about like maybe willing it to one of the, the other people to become like... I don't know. I'd have like a fun daughter. contest to become who's the next dungeon master. Oh, it's like a Willy Wonka. Oh, good call. Thing. Yeah, pouring into it. Yeah. Oh, that could, could cause problems. Could the daughter be like the one that carries the you know carries the torch? As it'll be something to remember her. Dad but what if by? you're Chuck and you've been playing with him since like you know 1985? Oh, Chuck's paid. Chuck's pissed. I would. I'd yeah. leave right now. Chuck's out of luck. He's SOL. You know what? Fan, you know, nepotism is big in this uh, this guy's community. That is that is crazy though that he's able to keep it going for that long. Yeah, I wouldn't be that interested. Though the way he does it, though, I definitely like Rev said. I I oh, let me go for a day. I don't know if I do it beyond that, but just to be part of that experience. Dude, this weekend was the first time in like since like I was in my like late teens or early twenties where I spent over twelve hours playing D and D with friends. Wow. Yeah. We got an Airbnb. There's five of us. We nice. just hung out. And we played D and D. That's a cool. That's a cool thing, uh, man. I loved it so much. That's cool. Do you think there's somebody that really wants to be a part of this crew, and he just keeps saying no to them? Like, how do you get in? Oh, you know what I mean. Well, gosh, he's, yeah, he's gone from four to sixty. So re- that's a lot. That's a lot of people to be doing the D and D with. I, 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 I don't even. I mean, I don't even know if I played games with 60 different people in my life. I, I don't, maybe yeah, I I don't know how he keeps track of all of that. Yeah, that's nuts. And you're right, Steve. I, I think I'd be that guy. I'd be the guy that will come on. Yeah. You know, but, you know, sometimes people just go, yeah, we don't want that person in the campaign. We just like the group the way it is. What is it going to cost you? How much do I have to give you to get into this? <laughs> Somebody says, I'd be Vic Nicky's Dungeon Master. I don't know what that means. Well, that's oh, probably not oh, D&D, but. Yeah, it's nothing to do with D&D, but. Yeah. Probably not. No. 
Well, uh, the, this is a scary thing, and I'm telling you the movie Minority Report should be put on notice for giving us the idea that we could have uh, autonomous self-driving cars, because people want them now, uh, and we don't have them now, so hey, you, 20-year-old Tesla driver in Canada, let me tell you something, Mr. Tesla guy, we do not have self-driving cars. Okay. This car can help you drive, but you don't get to sleep behind the wheel while your car is zipping down the road at 93 miles an hour, which is exactly what happened when he put it in the autopilot function. And police in Alberta were, like, getting calls from so many people going, Dude, there is a car with no driver going 93 miles an hour. Dude, I'm looking at the still shot of it, and I can understand why it would be freaking people out, because apparently he, he reclined his seat back. Yeah. <laughs> so when people look over and they look at the car, there's not a single body. Nothing. It's not even like, like someone that looks like they're passed out on the, you know... Like while sleeping, it's like he's fully down. Both seats were reclined, and so and it was traveling up to ninety three miles per hour. Why wouldn't you just have it set? I mean, look, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but when you if you're going to do something that stupid, wouldn't you just have it set at the speed limit at least? Well, I'd have it set at sixty nine. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what that is in kilo, like, uh, uh, kilometers. Kilometers. That's yeah, right. in kilometers per hour. I don't know either. It's probably like it's probably like four million. So he got charged for uh, speeding, dangerous driving, and they suspended his driver's license for 24 hours. That's it? 24 hours? It seems like I'm like the greatest slap on the wrist ever. Yeah, 24 hours? Okay. He wasn't driving anyway. So can you still drive if you let the autopilot drive you without a license? Because really, you're not driving. But this is when this is the whole you can't have nice things thing. Exactly. I mean, it's just like, okay, you're going to take a nap while having it go 93 miles per hour. Now, I will say. He's lucky nothing bad happened. It's uh, autopilot probably is the wrong word. I think Tesla needs to change it and not call it the autopilot function. I think they should call it the driver assist function because autopilot to me means that the, uh, the pilot, the car takes over. But do they call it autopilot? They say it's the Tesla's autopilot function in the story. I don't know. Do they call it that in Tesla? Yeah, I don't know if the, like Tesla like says that or it's just like people who report on it are like, well, it's an autopilot. Yep, it's yeah. called Tesla autopilot. Well, yeah, that's probably a bad idea. Yeah, Tesla, come on. And they say it's designed to steer, accelerate, and brake on the driver's behalf. But the car maker says, yeah, but they don't make the vehicle autonomous. And they want you to still keep your hands on the wheel. Then don't call it autopilot, okay? I mean, I'm a word guy, and it's like we've used the word autopilot for things that take over. That's what autopilot does. It takes over. But you still got to be alert in there. Like a pilot up in the air uses autopilot, but it's not like that gives them like free range to just go take a nap. Yeah, it only maintains uh, speed and altitude. It doesn't actually change direction or any of that, from what I understand. Yeah, see, I don't understand any of it. I just know in all the movies I watch, autopilot means it takes over, and then they go get a cup of coffee, they have a long conversation with the girl they're in love with on the spaceship. That's what I know. That's my limit of what autopilot means. So, you know what? Don't use it unless you're making it sci-fi autopilot, where I literally can go take a nap. It even says in the description on Wikipedia, and we know Wikipedia is the be-all, end-all. Of course. Autopilot does not replace human operators. What? Oh, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I look forward to the day where I don't have to, like, I can hop in a vehicle and it will take me somewhere. That would be well, really cool. You do. You have your daughter. You mean you want to get into something that, like, will do the driving for you? Yeah. Like, some kind of, like, transit system, possibly, that could do that for you? <laughs> oh, I want my own, though. See, I like oh, the gosh. individual. <laughs> you, yeah. I don't want to actually mix with people. Gosh. I want I want to be all by myself. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. What is this transit <laughs> right. sense you're talking you about? You robots. Actually, I'm very excited because, I'm obviously, light rail, it's coming to Mercer Island, so they're mm-hmm. building all this stuff. I am looking forward to that. I love nice. the idea that I can go wherever I want to go. Like I'll be able to go to Bellevue. I'll be able to come to Seattle and not have to take a car. I do like that mm-hmm. idea a lot, actually. I will be using that because... Then you can go yeah. boozing while you go out well, shopping. You're absolutely right. Seriously. I see the folks at Nordstrom because Nordstrom's got a bar inside like at Bellevue Square yes. on the second level. It's a pretty sweet looking bar, too. And they I, always have the, the college football games on whenever yeah. I've been there in past years. I, I just feel like, man, I want to do that. But it's like, well, I got to get in my car and drive home. So I'm not going to do that. You know, if you know, and so it sucks. But hey, if I can take the, you know, if I can take the light rail, oh, I'm getting boozed up at Nordstrom. Nice. BJ uh, getting day drunk at Nordstrom's. That sounds like a good idea. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have myself a drinky at Nordy's. That's what I'm gonna do, dude. That's like you know, like you know, you go to like um, when we go to those radio conventions, and sometimes there's like certain 
adult um, sex workers uh, oh, oh, yes, in the yes, bar yes, <laughs> yes. taking advantage of the drunk people. Like, this is their opportunity to swoop in. Do you think, like, you know, because, like, Nordstrom's got, like, the, the guy or the girl that will help you pick out clothes, like the fashion Oh, right, yeah, person. they have, yeah, they do. They have the assistant. I've fallen v- victim of that before where it's like this person's just pumping your tires. You're like, yeah, I do need that sports coat that I'm never going to wear. That was $250. Not that I've ever done that. But, you know... <laughs> They could just hang around the, the the bar and wait for like drunk BJ and drunk other people and be like, dude, you know, I'm looking at you over there and you would look really good in this sweater. Like, I wonder, dude. You, you you may have you may be onto something. They probably sell more. Yeah, I mean, they Nordy's has got they know what's going on. They their food and they got the e bar, which is which is like they have a, the little thing outside. Like a, mm-hmm. they all have a section where you can eat, but then this one is called Habitat. Yes, and the Habitat is like a full on. Hey man, just sit down, and have a couple beverages, and we'll bring food from the e bar to you if you need to. Yeah, your significant other shopping get wasted with us at yeah. Nordstrom's. Yeah, I I I, I love the idea. Are they Nordstrom prices though? Ah, I've never eaten there because I've, I've I've never gone and done it, so I don't know. I'm talking more like the drinks. Are the drinks going to be like I'm buying a drink in Vegas? You know oh, what I mean? that's a good call. See, if they're smart, no. I mean, they should be reasonably priced because then you'll buy the other stuff. It's kind of like when you go gambling. Yes. Here, I'll hook you up with this vodka tonic. It should be free. You I used to, I, I, you know, your wife is still trying on more shoes. I used you to know this. the guy that was in charge of all the Nordstrom restaurants, and it was fascinating. Like, I mean, he was a legitimate restaurant guy, like one of the top guys. They oh. went out and got him because they wanted their restaurants to be, like, top notch. Could you tell him that his French fries are really good and his French dip is all right. tasty as well? Next time Ooh. I see him, man, sometimes we play cards together, and he's good at that, too. He's a good. He's good at that too. He's a good at that too. The cards and the Nordstrom. He's a good at everything. Uh, yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. On a map, what state is directly above Arkansas? Nebraska. No. Oh. Delaware. No. Mississippi. <laughs> no. Oh, you were so close. It wasn't Mississippi. Mm. It was Miss Ori. See, she's not. She's not married yet. Okay. You want to shot to be wow. Steve, you got it. Oh. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another question from a listener. I'm getting my wages garnished. Can bankruptcy help with that? Absolutely. Uh, One of the big reasons people file bankruptcy is because they have a judgment or a lawsuit against them or their wages are getting garnished uh, and so they can't pay their other regular ongoing bills. People sometimes think that you can't file bankruptcy once they have a judgment against them or once a garnishment has started, and that's not true. Filing bankruptcy will immediately stop any garnishment that you have going except for child support uh, and stop your creditors from continuing on with garnishments of your bank account, your wages, um, and in most cases will discharge that liability uh, through the bankruptcy process. And we can file a bankruptcy case uh, for you usually the day you come in. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. When was the last time you took a look at the asset allocation of your investments? With the recent increases in the stock market, your investments may have behaved differently, with some gaining or losing more than others. This can throw your asset allocation out of balance. If you haven't rebalanced recently, take a closer look to make sure your allocations meet your objectives. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU.